How's it going, everybody? It's Ryan. Wanted to talk about a conversation I had with someone at the gym, and it was kind of interesting. We were talking about powerlifting, and we had a lot of uh, things in common that were very, uh, very common, like you know about Dan Green, about the stuff that we watch on YouTube and articles and stuff, and just getting stronger. And uh, he's much younger than me, uh, like 20, 19 years old, and and he uh, wanted to see if he needed some help with his form. He can. He said he can deadlift 500 pounds. He could squat 429, I think, or was it four? I think it was 420, and his bench was in the, I think in the, the low, the high twos. I can't remember exactly. I think his total was like 1200. But anyways, uh, yeah, the uh, the topic of uh, steroids came up, and he, you know, he said that you know, if you can just tell me to kind of fuck off if. Um, if you don't want to help me with this or whatever, and uh, to make a long story short, I just said, you know, I'm not, you know, if you want to do drugs or whatnot, I mean, I'm of the opinion that you're kind of young for it, but I mean, take my opinion with with a grain of salt because I really don't have any experience with it. Nor, um, like I said, you should barely listen to my opinion. You should gather a lot of opinions because, you know, I'm not going to be the one to basically give you advice on something I really know nothing about and even if I was a doctor or even if I had a lot of education I might have certain biases and whatnot I might even say use that word wrong bias bias anyways my, my my idea is that if you're gonna take a drug or you're gonna do a sport or you're gonna do something at a relatively I don't say high level but at a level that's definitely outside of the realm of what's necessarily open to public access like doing something that's basically not let's say legal is that uh, you you talk to people that have been doing it and have been doing it with some reasonable amount of success and that's what I basically said because I don't want to be um, I don't know I don't pretend to know all the answers I just have this opinion and I have this viewpoint from a personal trainer with lots of experience but mostly the regular everyday people and I told them one of the reasons why I don't do steroids is well the truth is number one is cost that's definitely the one factor but the other reason is um, it's just another th training variable, you know. I mean, training with with gear uh, or steroids and training without steroids, you know. It's just like you know, how much is it placebo? I'm sort of kind of, I'm not saying anti supplements, but I'm definitely a minimalist when it comes to supplements. So I'm I'm always of the of the opinion that you know, if you're gonna do steroids, it's because you're training at an extremely high level, and you're like a professional athlete or something like that, but. Again, I don't have a whole lot of experience, nor do I have in contact with a whole lot of people. I mean, I know some people, but I don't really like, you know, they're not friends or anything. So it's not like I have conversations about it. So anyways, but kind of what the main thing I want to talk about is um, is honeymoon period. I said, you know, you're like in the honeymoon period of training. And it's a, a powerlifting because, you know, he was talking about deadlifting more than once a week. And I was I remember being like that last year. I was like, I want to deadlift more than once a week. I can't imagine deadlifting anything less than twice a week. It's just crazy, right? And now I find myself deadlifting, you know, once every two or three weeks now. Sometimes once a week only. And sometimes for only like three sets of two or something like that or work up to every single. And sometimes not doing a whole lot of volume. And uh, what's sort of interesting is that I'm finding that there's no my strength doesn't really disappear um, it actually keeps building on top of one another you know as long as I don't get hurt I stay healthy so it's kinda like if I try to push and push and push I just I'm just spinning my wheels I'm training more than what I can essentially hold on to for a long period of time I guess hold on to as in like I don't know consistent strength uh, might be a concept not quite the same I haven't read 365 strong by um, by Brendan Lilly but Anyways, what I want to say is that you know you're in the honeymoon period. I don't know if you remember falling in love with powerlifting or falling in love with the strength training or falling in love with one of the three lifts, squat, bench, or deadlift, and you just want to do it all the time because you get a huge thrill out of it and, and it's exciting and it's fun. You can't wait. Like for me, of course, it's always been, oh, I can't wait to deadlift. I can't wait to deadlift. And it was just something that you totally enjoyed. And I say this as a honeymoon period, and I talked to... This per I talk to this person uh, or I talk to anyone like this is that you know it's it's really just you you're just it's it's new to you you know you ever like get your for when you first learn to drive or you you know for a CrossFitter that first gets into CrossFit and they're totally excited or when you first become a personal trainer or when you first get a brand new phone I use it like that one you know when you get a, you, there's this, there's this honeymoon period it's a certain period of time where you just just love doing it all the time 
And then, of course, as, as the honeymoon period kind of wanes and winds and kind of goes away, you kind of go into more of a mature relationship with uh, a lift or a sport or a hobby. And um, what's kind of funny is that you still enjoy it. You don't, you don't have the same feeling for it, but you still love it. And that's kind of how I feel about training and kind of what I've learned over the course of watching YouTube videos and following people on um, YouTube channels and, and just learning and kind of figuring out my own strength and trying different programs and trying different uh, techniques and, you know, messing with volume, dealing with minor injuries here and there. I'm almost at the point, not necessarily physically, but definitely mentally almost, to a point where kind of Ben Rice and... I guess where Ben Rice is, I won't say Johnny Candido. Johnny Candido is pretty aggressive, and even you know Brett Gibbs too. I don't, I don't know if it's because of uh, um, Ben Rice's tone or just his kind of his style or his his ideas, or even uh, uh, Garrett Blevins. They're just really like they just seem really patient. I mean, at the same time, I'm sure they're impatient. They want to get to their goals, but they're they're very uh, thorough. They're very methodical, but at the same time, they're not trying to get there too fast, if that makes any sense. They're kind of following a science approach or not even, I guess a science approach, but they're very strategic. They have a, I know that Johnny Candido is, and I'm sure Brett Gibbs is, but in my perception, you know, I don't know these people personally. I just, you know, I have them as Facebook, Facebook friends, and I, I watch them on YouTube. I comment on their channels, but I see Brett Gibbs and Johnny Candido as just very aggressive. Uh, of course, they're all passionate, but very aggressive, kind of more like trying to reach this goal, f I guess, faster almost. Whereas it seems to me, whereas Garrett Blevins and Ben Rice are just kind of more, maybe, I think a lot has to do, obviously, with personality. Uh, but maybe the way the way they approach the bar also, because I watched them lift, you know. They just have a certain demeanor about them, and you, and you kind of see that, and it's almost like, they're uh, more. They seem more calm and more collected. That's not necessarily the case, but I mean that's just my uh, my uh, my kind of observation. And when you're in this time frame or you're in this period of after the honeymoon period, you just get used to grinding. And that's sort of like what I've taken from Ben Rice: the idea of just grinding, not just not grinding literal, not just grinding literal reps, but also just grinding the daily grind of just working towards your total, improving your lifts, getting stronger, and just kind of consistently working at it. And I don't think there's a any better way of explaining it, you know. So, so when I come into lift, I, I will definitely say that some motivation and some kind of aggression has kind of come down just a tiny bit, but. At the same time, I know that I'm, I'm getting stronger and I'm making progress and I'm staying healthy. So it's, it's sort of like this uh, interesting balance of things. So anyways, those are some thoughts. Uh, leave a comment below if you have a question or just want to add to the discussion. Um, let me know if you know what I'm talking about. When you, you get so excited about something, you keep doing it. And you kind of, I won't say fall out of love, but you just don't have the same kind of excitement for it. Um, but yeah. Thanks for watching.